Come on. Hey, high five someone you're sitting next to. Tell them it's good to be at the hill. That was weak. Let's try that again. Let me hear you from up here. Come on. There we go. There we go. All right, man. We're so excited you're with us today. We're going to be talking. It's on the way. Anybody with kids uh, in the house? Anybody at all? A few of us. Like, so there's some questions um, that you get asked a lot. And one of those inevitably comes, um, are we there yet? I've got four kids and it inevitably, it doesn't matter if we're going from the church or the house to the church or vice versa. I hear this phrase, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Or, or how about this one? I'm hungry. And you guys know what I'm talking about? I'm bored. Or the one that really I hate is I have to be. Well, you just went, Megan. Come on. I mean, Jace, you just went. Uh, just kidding, babe. Uh, she's like, that's you. Yeah, I drink a lot of coffee. Um, but, but really, like, um, so we are going to India. So tomorrow we're going to leave. And on the way, I got to stop by Walmart because there's stuff I forgot to get. <laughs> you know what I mean? On the way. It's on the way. So touch someone say it's on the way. Genesis chapter 11, we're going to do 31, 32, and then Genesis 1. Here's what it says. Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his grandson, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, and his son Abram's wife, and they went together. For, uh, let's pause for a second here. This guy, man, poor Sarah, she has to travel that far with her in-laws. That's... That's tough, man. Poor and nephew. Lot's got to like uh, Abraham's got to deal with Lot in this. What a mess. Anyhow, they go together from Ur of the Chaldeans. Say Ur. 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 It makes doesn't it make you feel like you want to hit a baseball or something? Ur. From Ur of the Chaldeans, or like you're a pirate. I don't know. Ur of the Chaldeans. In order to enter the land of Canaan, they went as far as Haran and settled there. Thirty-two. Now the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, hey, listen, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land of which I will show you. That's good right there. God, we thank you that you're faithful. Lord, I pray that we'd only say the things you have us to say. And God, we'd glorify you with our lives. And as Dustin prayed, we'd make you famous. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's on the way, man. Anybody else thankful for just stuff that gets to happen for you while, while you're on the way? You all know what I'm talking about? Just on the way. So a real quick backstory for uh, Tara here. Tara's got a good thing going, y'all. Tara's, uh, he's got, a, got three kids. Um, he's got an Abram, which eventually would be Abraham, the father of many nations. So he's got an Abram, he's got a Nahor, and he's got a Haran. That tells me one thing. Abraham loved one more than the others. <laughs> you know, because you can't love Abram and love Nahor the same. Am I right? Like, like that's like who names their kid Nahor? So nevertheless, he's got these three kids. Like you don't love him. That's the reality. Uh, <laughs> well, I have so many jokes running through my brain right now that I'm having to filter. Um, they would have been funny though. Let's move on. Uh, so, so Nahor, ma'am, he's. Uh, um, let me back up. Terah's got these kids, and Haran, in verse 27, 28, it says, Haran died, he passes away in the presence of his father. So talk about tragedy. Like, like that's, that's a bad situation. Like, that's a horrific thing for, for, for uh, Terah to have to deal with. His, his son Haran passes away. But then we go to 31, and we see that he then leaves for the land of Canaan. Now, I'm going to pause for a second. What is Canaan? It's the promised land. It's the land that flows with milk and honey, right? It's the thing that, that Moses journeyed to. It's the thing that, matter of fact, in 12.1, the reason we brought this up was he said, go to the land I'll show you. The land I'll show you was what? Canaan, you got it. I'm so proud of you guys. There's going to be a quiz later, so I hope you're taking notes. Uh, it, was, it, it was, in fact, it was Canaan, man. It was the land that flows with milk and honey. It was the promised land. So we can assume that God was calling Terah to go to the promised land. We can assume that Terah had a call on his life, but he, some things happened, and he got to a place, and he stopped just short of the fullness that God had intended for his life. And Abraham then picked up his call and, and carried it out and inhabited the promised land. And I just want to pause and say, my heart's desire for me is that no one, no one will inhabit my promise. Come on, somebody. 
my promise, my hope for me, for my life and my family is that we'll do the things that God has in store for us to do. So, so Terah, he loses his son Haran and there's a little bit of time passes and people get married, which can be tragic also. And then, and then he leaves for her, for, for, um, he leaves for Canaan. Now it's six, it's 1100 miles from Ur to Canaan. It's 1,100 miles from, from where he sets off to where his end game is. He travels 600 miles to Haran and he settles there. Now, I got to pause for just a second because I need us to know it doesn't matter what's happened in your past. It doesn't matter what hurt, what frustration has happened. God is still calling you to higher places. God is still calling you out. God is still calling you forward. He still has the best for your life. He's got incredible things in store for you. But for a lot of us, things happen in our life and we stop and we say, well, I probably am never going to move on past this. I'm probably never going to, never, never going to achieve those, those dreams that God gave me because look what happened. I, I can promise you that nothing separates you from the love and call that God has for your life. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. So we have, we have this guy here, man. We have, we have Tara, and he has this tragic thing happen. And we see just a few verses later, he begins to move into the callings and the fullness of what God has for his life. Now, we, gotta, we have to understand at the same time how crazy this was. Because he's leaving a land where he knows everything. Right? He's leaving everything he knows for what could be. Now that's crazy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's insane, right? Like that is absolutely, what kind of lunatic leaves everything he knows for something that could be? So you're saying there's a chance is the kind of thing that's going on here. And it's so interesting because God has never, God does not work in the land of could be's and might be's. Come on somebody. God's word declares that his promises are yes and amen. Come on, it's done, it's well, it's finished. Come on somebody, it's written. When he said it, he intends to accomplish what he said he's going to do over your life. It's amazing because it was said. He took it in faith and left. I wonder how many of us it said. And we're going, but what if it doesn't work out? But what, what if I fail? What if, what if it doesn't happen the way it's supposed to happen? What if I get left out or left behind? What if, what if, what if? And my response is always the same. What if God does what he says he's going to do? What if he fulfills the promises that he spoke to you and your family and your life? What if he does it? What if he does it? He doesn't work in the area of could be. His promises are yes and amen. Now, interesting, the Chaladines, Ur of the Chaladines. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> Ur of the Chaladines. They were historically known for the, being the wisest people in the region. Now that's, that, so you have to understand the power of what's going on here. Tara walks up to the smartest people in the planet and says, hey y'all, I'm going to roll out, okay? I'm going to leave, I'm, I'm going to go. And they, where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> How are you going to get there? Not for sure. Do you know what it's called? It's called, thank you in a minute. It's, what's it called? It's called Canaan. What's in Canaan? I don't know. <laughs> you going to fly there? What's, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get there. They didn't fly back then. <laughs> so, so what's going to happen? I don't know. Like, like the wisest people on the planet, Lauren, and all he can answer, I don't know. He was a, he was a redneck. It wasn't, I don't know. It was, I don't know. <laughs> and all my redneck friends said, Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> I don't know. And so you have to understand that, that the wisest people on the planet thought he was crazy. They had to have thought he was crazy. But I remember a verse that said that God will use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I need you to know not everybody's going to be in on what you're dreaming to do. Come on, somebody. Not, you're going to share your dreams with people and they're going to go, they're going to smile like this, like, oh, yeah. And they're, in their mind, they're going, he's a lunatic. That's great. I remember when God began to call us to plan, not call us, when we began to share with people, uh, not you guys, because it was other people. You guys were perfect. <laughs> I can't even make eye contact when I say lies like that. <laughs> Whenever we begin to share that we were going to plant churches, um, that we were going to plant a church first in Bolivar, I, you could see it on people's face. They're like, oh, that's a great idea, Pastor. Yeah, that's awesome. And in their mind, they're going, oh, that's cute. 
<laughs> Look at the little guy. <laughs> That's neat. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> and then God began to do it. And then God began, began to see people saved. I remember telling people that we're going to go to other parts of the world. And people were like, oh, that's cute, but you're from Stockton. That's okay. Good luck. And, and, and then God began to do it. Come on. And then my haters, come on, somebody. <laughs> then your haters have to give God glory, the word says, for what he's doing in your life. They're going to hate on your dreams. But as you stick to it, and as God does it, they got to begin to give God glory for what he's doing in your life. Amen. Come on, somebody. It's amazing, man, of what's going on here. Like, like, like people are going to hate on, and it's so important for you to know that you need to dream. And you need to dream big. Megan always says, if your dreams don't make people laugh, your dreams aren't big enough. Here's what I know. God is calling us today out of, out of the status quo. God is calling us today out of stagnant lifestyles, out of issues and insecurities and out of failures. God is calling us today out of comfort because comfort leads to complacency and complacency is the biggest enemy of greatness on your life. I like it when I hear, ooh, because I know it hurt. Come on, somebody. But that's real. Like God never said, like it wasn't written in the Beatitudes like, blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are those that are persecuted for my sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those that are comfortable. Good for them. And a picture of him doing that. Like that, that's not part of it. <laughs> Nowhere does the gospel say your life's going to be comfortable. Most of the time it says it's going to be the opposite. But it says that we have peace in the midst of the chaos at times. Amen? So we got to look at Terah, man. Terah, God's speaking to Terah and he says, Terah, I know you've been through some stuff. I know that some of the greatest tragedies of your life have just happened, but I want you to know I don't want you to quit. Tara, we got to keep going, baby. God talks like that to me, baby, you know. <laughs> Brother, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> God's like, come on, brother, we got to go. We can't stop short of what I've called you to, brother. We got to go. Terry, we can't let what, what happened hold us back from where we're going. We can't let our past hold our future hostage. Come on, Tara. We got to go. And it's 1,100 miles, and they're walking. So that's, there's that. If you ever see me walking, there's a 100% chance I ran out of gas or my car broke down. 100% chance. <laughs> For real. And if I'm running, you know what's happening. A bear's behind me. I don't know where the bear came from. I don't know. But it's behind me. I promise. Tara, they're going to have to walk 1,100 miles. Now, the reality is for you guys, the things that God is calling you to do, they may seem so far away like you'll never get there. It's one step at a time. The journey, in this case, of 1,100 miles literally will always happen one step at a time. <sighs> one step at a time. See, sometimes we look at it and we're like, God, I'm never going to make it. Look how far I'm never going to make it. And we quit before we even begun to try. God's going, listen, I need you to step up and I need you to step out because I'm going to bring about the fullness of my plan for your life. But it's going to take your effort and it's going to take your effort one step at a time. And now listen, it's really cool because for the first 600 miles it goes well. How do we know? Well, we don't, but nothing's written that it went bad. So I assume it went good. Amen? Um, not that there wasn't dispute because again, there's a lot of family involved and porcupines poke one another. And so that's just part of life. But then they get to Haran. And we got to spend some time here. They get to Rahan, back to Haran, which is interesting because several years or however long earlier, his son died and his son's name was Haran. Now it's interesting, it's not the same word in the Hebrew. I, I, my Hebrew is non-existent, but let me practice for you. One is pronounced Haran. The other is pronounced Haran. Honest to God, I don't know, they're, they're spelled a little bit different. Could not tell you. I hit the play button for the computer to tell me how to say it. They sounded the same. But apparently there's a difference. Oddly enough, the definitions are almost identical. What's your point, Pastor Bo? My point is this. What set him back years earlier, God brought him forward to deal with. We feel like stuff that has happened will escape with if we just act like it's not there. It's like a shadow. You guys ever have a shadow? <laughs> come on. Someone's like, no, what's that? I don't know what that is. Well, come on up to the altar. We're going to pray for you. And 
Like, like I've never once, like as I'm living my life, like I've, the sun's beaten down, I've never looked, oh gosh, and there's a shadow behind me. That's never happened, right? Um, because I just have learned to pretend like it's not there. That's your Haran. You've just learned to live like it's not there. Oh, we've learned to act like it doesn't bug us. We've learned to act like it's non-existent. We've learned to act like, like we've put on the face and, and Tara, he lived it and it was hurtful and it was hard, but it got up and he continued to do what God called him to do. And for 600 miles, he didn't have to deal with it. And God loves you so much that he'll let you get over halfway to the fullness that God has for your life. But at some point, you're going to have to deal with your Haran. You're going to have to deal with the thing that sets you back, that sets you off, that turns you out. At some point on your journey to the fullness that God has for your life, you're going to have to go through Haran. It's on the way. Now most of us, not you guys, it's just me actually here that wishes I didn't have to. You guys get up and put your shoes on, can't wait to deal with Haran. I like lay in bed for four days hoping it doesn't show up. <laughs> but you guys are perfect and I'm a mess. Jesus, I'm praying for them right now. <laughs> God's looking at him and he's like, Tara, I've called you higher, but there's a mountain in the way. Haran literally means mountaineer. And then people's names. And both, both Haran and Haran <laughs> mean mountaineer. God is calling you higher. He's calling your, your business ethics and your finances higher. He's calling your relationships higher. But there's always a Haran in the way. It's interesting. He loves you so much that he'll, he loves you so much that he refuses to let you bypass that which hurt you so long ago. He's going to make you deal with it because, because he wants you to make it to the promise. And if you don't deal with Haran, you'll never, ever, ever, ever make it to the promise. Let me, let me preach it like this. There was a guy in the Old Testament named Moses. You heard of Moses? Moses was a baby and Pharaoh was scared. Uh, that's how you know Pharaoh was a guy. Because there was a baby and he was scared. <laughs> and so Pharaoh, Pharaoh uh, was scared of the babies and, and, and he starts, he says, I'm going to kill all the, all the babies. And so what does he do? Someone knows he kills them all, right? Do you know how he kills them? He throws them in the Nile River. Now it's interesting because that which terminated everybody else's dream is the very thing that God used to take Moses to the fulfillment of his promise. You got to get a hold of this because the very thing that terminated everybody else's hope, everybody else's peace, everybody else's encouragement and joy, the very thing that stopped everybody else from going forward, God used to carry Moses to the fulfillment of his dream for the fulfillment of his promise. See, it's funny, you think it's going to kill you, but it's actually going to set you up. That's deep. You, you think if you deal with it, here's the reality. What's the difference? They both ended up in the Nile. Well, one refused and got thrown into the Nile. The other placed their trust in God in the Nile. See, the, the, rea the, the reality of your Nile is, is, is inevitable. It'll either carry you or it'll kill you. It'll either promote you or it'll stop you right where you are. It's interesting because Moses' promise had to go through the Nile. Terah's dream, Terah's promised land had to go through Haran. And we find ourselves in Haran so often. We find ourselves in Haran and we stop. We say, God, I just can't deal with this again. I can't do this one more time. It's, it's awesome, guys, because it says that Tara settled there. Tara settled there. Say settled. Now, for, for most of us, settled means he got there and he talked in his Charlton Heston voice and went, Ha, ah, the land is good. I like it. I'll live here. <laughs> right? Like, like or, okay, for, for the next generation down, it was Russell Crowe. And the next generation down from that, I don't know, Justin Bieber, somebody, I don't know who it is. I'm, I'm a Russell Crowe generator. <laughs> he was the real. Anyhow. And so, so, <laughs> so, so like we feel like he got there and he was like, Haran is beautiful. I will live here forever. Uh, <laughs> I'll mount my steed and I'll ride and gallop. Like we feel like that's like what was going on in his world. But that's so not the case. That word settle means to sit down. It means to remain. 
So what that would look like is this. He's lived his life, Haran has passed. He's decided that he's not going to let what's, what was keep him from what's going to be. So he moves forward the process. He gets now confronted again with Haran. And he sits down and he throws a fit. Benaiah, I had Benaiah and all my kids for, it seemed like an eternity, but it was about three hours yesterday. <laughs> it's funny, the, the women are laughing and the men are praying in tongues for me. I appreciate it. <laughs> my wife and I, man, um, one time she was late home. <laughs> Hold on. There's never been one time she was late home. There were several times she was late home. And she just laughs because she knows it's true. So I just plan. If she says she'll be home at 2 o'clock, I just know that means maybe a.m. And so, so <laughs> I love you. And so things not to say when you're going to be leaving the country. Uh, <laughs> you're beautiful. I told you that today. You look great. Have you lost weight? You look awesome. So anyhow. <laughs> I told her, I said, babe, you cannot do this to me. You cannot leave me with four kids alone for that long. She goes, I do it every day. I said, you're a better parent. It's not even a competition. I didn't even lace my sneakers up. You win. I'm horrible. You, I, I, all the dads know what I'm talking about. You think you're good. Until she's like, can I go on a shopping day? You're like, yeah. Hey, mom. <laughs> Melinda, I need help. <laughs> Just for a minute, I gotta work. So anyhow, she's got a, a, a ministry in Bolivar that she she was doing yesterday. And so I have the kids, and and I'm trying to work, and it was it was a long day. And I've got Benaya now. Benaya Benaya knows where my snack jar is. All your kids probably know where my snack jar is, but Benaya knows where the, the like the secret place is, right? Um, because he has access. That'll preach about sonhood. Oof. Gosh, that'll preach. Anyhow, so he goes behind my desk and he goes to my drawer. Now, Megan tells me he can only have one piece of candy a day. I confuse that with 467. <laughs> we have disagreements about it. And so the dentist thinks she's right as well as the doctor. Every dad that has kids alone with them know that I'm right. So anyhow, uh, he comes to my little drawer and he pulls it open and I shut it with my foot. Because if I tell, yeah, I'm like, man, this kid. So I shut it with my foot. I'm trying to work like this. And I've got to shut with my foot. And Benaya's like, any candy, any mo, <laughs> mo, any mo. And I'm like, uh, buddy, you can't have a Snickers. Here's a carrot. <laughs> Come on, you know I ain't got carrots in my office. <laughs> that was the biggest joke of the whole day. <laughs> There's a Twix, you know what I mean? So anyhow, I'm like, I'm like, no, buddy, you can't have that. Here's an animal cracker or something. And he looked at me, and I'm like, I'm like this. I'm like, oh, animal cracker. And he looks at me, he's like, nah, mo any. <laughs> and I'm like, buddy, I can't give you mo any. No, it's no more. Animal, cr animal cracker. <laughs> he grabs the animal cracker, and he throws it across the room. So this is where discipline comes into play. I'm like, boy, if you weren't 18 months. I said, no, Benaya, no. He went, Mo Annie. No, Benaya. He sat down. And he was doing like this, you know. And I'm like, but I can be like, no, no, mama. And he's going crazy. And I start laughing. <laughs> Because he's hilarious. Because he's never going to get his way until he gets up. Tara shows up in Haran and says, I want, I want the fullness, God. And God said, I got the fullness for you, Tara. But you got to go through Haran. Tara sits down and he says, I don't want Haran. And God said, Haran is part of the process. And Tara says, I don't want. And he starts to throw a fit. And God looks at Tara and he says, Tara, if you can't move on, you'll never move forward. Here we are with our proverbial Haran that's broken our heart that's frustrated us, that's aggravated us, that's done us dirty, and we're throwing a fit. God, I don't want this. He says, I know, but I need you to deal with it. See, your Haran is not meant to hurt you. It's meant to heal you. It's meant to help you. It's not meant, it's not meant. Haran was over halfway. I have my own opinion of Haran. Geographically, as far as what it was supposed to do. See, Haran, 
was not, was not meant to punish him before he got to the promise. It was to propel him into the promise. It was, it was there to push him into everything that God has for his life. And there he is, settled, unwilling to deal with the frustration of Haran. Unwilling, unwilling to deal with what it meant back then, unwilling to move on. It's funny because if we were to be honest, if we had a bad boss, we treat the next boss horrible for what they didn't even do. All the bosses know what I'm talking about. If we've had a bad relationship, we treat the next relationship really sketchy because of what they did. If we had a bad church experience, we treat the next church bad. We're, we're waiting for them to fail because of what someone else did or didn't do. It's, it's amazing because we're constantly judging what someone else did or didn't do. Right? We're constantly judging everyone else's actions but our intentions. Like literally, if I were to take a poll and say, how many of you guys woke up today and thought, I am going to try to ruin someone's day? Right? If you're going to raise your hand, like, like you're a horrible person. And I mean that as lovingly as I can say that. You need to come to the altar. Grant's going to lay hands on you. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> like for real, like nobody does that. Like legitimately, you would be defined as an evil person. Right? So that's not you. I know that's not you. I know that's not you because that's not your intention. That's not your heart. But what happens is when, some, when you hurt someone's feeling like you come to them, let's say I hurt John, and I'm like, John, man, I'm so sorry. And he's like, no, you meant to do it. Man, you meant to cut me off in traffic. I was like, no, man, I was plan putting on my makeup. I didn't even know you were there. Or whatever. I was texting or something. I'm just kidding. But, but whatever. Like if he were to be looking at me going, no, you meant to do it. And I was like, no, John, I promise you I didn't mean to do it. I would never intentionally do that. I would never do that. And if he, he would stay mad at me, I'd be so frustrated and so hurt because he couldn't see the integrity of my heart. But then when someone hurts me, I assume they did it on purpose. It's funny, you judge their actions, but you want everyone else to judge your intentions. That's real life. Furthermore, we pass it on, right? So like you go to work or you go home or whatever happens and, and someone ticks you off and versus dealing with it, you just, you pass it to your spouse. I've never done that. <laughs> Maybe once. She, no, come on. Give us, I'm just kidding. No, we've all done that. When we get to Haran and we don't want to deal with it, so we begin to turn it on everybody else in our world. We begin to push it on everyone else in our circle. It'd be like, it'd be like if, if I were to walk up to John and, and go, hey, John, and John were to punch me in my face, and I would be like, oh, that didn't hurt at all, and I were to move on. <laughs> If I were to move on past that, I'm not going to use grace <laughs> for obvious reasons. And I were to punch Bradley in the face, right? And Bradley would be like, dude, what are you doing? And if I were to say, well, John hit me, like that's going to come with a restraining order and maybe some jail time. That's cr Who would do that? That's crazy. But emotionally, that is the exact thing we do all the time. They hurt us, so I hurt them because hurt people hurt people. If we don't heal in Haran. So God loves you enough to know that the fulfillment of your promise is real. But on the way, you got to go through Haran. He loves you enough to tell you you have to get through Haran. The Bible says in verse 32 that Terah died in Haran, refusing to deal with the hurt. Briley, <laughs> she was, uh, we had a dog named Gus for a little while, and Gus was a big bird dog. He's beautiful. Uh, German short hair. He was awesome. Um, and, and he ran off all the time. <laughs> He's a bird dog. Anyhow, uh, he was gone one day, and we couldn't find him. And so I have to tell my kids, I have four, and so I have to tell my kids, I'm, I keep saying I have four, I'm trying to convince myself that that was a wise decision. <laughs> and now maybe more, we don't know. We change our minds. Uh, so she keeps changing our minds for us. <laughs> so, so I have to go home and tell my kids that, that Gus has gone after. And you're looking at me like, what is that? <laughs> so we're, we're, I have to go home and tell my kids that Gus is gone. So I get home and I'm like, guys, um, Gus is gone. 
he, he ran away. I'm, what happened was he was on the road and a family drove by and saw him and they've got cute kids and they got a nice big house and he's living inside and they're playing with him and petting him. They got, it's got amazing life and I'm, I'm really uh, speaking in, in faith to my children. <laughs> and, and Briley goes, maybe he's sleeping in the woods. I said, well, maybe he is. Yeah, Barbara, he could be sleeping in the woods. And Briley goes, maybe he's dead. <laughs> I said, maybe, Miss Positivity, that's, it could be. <laughs> See, Tara refused to deal with the truth of the situation. So he died short of the promise that God has on his life. God, God had these great things. God's trying to take him higher, but he had to go through Haran. You have to understand the power of this. He's, it's 600 miles from Haran. I'm sorry, from, from Ur of the Chaldeans, because you have to say both, because if you just say Ur, it sounds like I'm mad. Ur of the Chaldeans, all the way up to Haran, it's 600 miles. And then it's only 500 from, from Haran, all the way down to um, Canaan. So he's over halfway there. Faith, come on now. He's over halfway there. Now, simple, simple, simple math, let's say, um, it's 500 miles from Haran to Canaan. Okay, if they traveled 15 miles a day at 3 miles an hour, Someone check my math. It's like five hours a day they'd be walking. Is that doable? Like, could you walk for five hours a day? Yeah, most of us could. Okay. At that rate, it would take 34 days to get from Haran to the promised land. Here's my point. Tara stopped 34 days short of breakthrough because of Haran. What if I were to look at you today? What if, what if I could tell you today that in 34 days you'd get your financial breakthrough? I think people would shout. But here's the reality. There's a Haran on the way called tithing, giving, and sowing. What if I said that God would heal your family and restore relationships? What if, what if I said God would heal hurts between you and your children or families or friends? God would say, I want to do it. If I could say in 34 days, he'd do it. I think we could get excited about that until we realize part of the process to the healing is Haran. Part of the process to the promise is the preparing place of my heart in Haran. What, what if I could tell you in 34 days, every dream you've had in God could come to pass? Do you think you could keep going? Or would you stop short? Problem is we don't know if it's 34 days. I understand that. I, under, I understand that. I understand that we're not sure all the specifics of when things are going to happen. But here's what we do know. Haran is on the way. On the way to your promise. On the way to the things God has called you to. There's a Haran. And Haran is there to help you. I got in a motorcycle wreck a few years ago. And I vivid, I've shared this story a bunch. So if you've heard it, pretend like it's the first time. I was sliding on my helmet, my shoulder, and my elbow down the highway. And it was, I'm sure, hilarious, but terrifying for me. Hilarious if you were watching. Mike, you would have laughed at me. Uh, <laughs> I would have laughed at me. Anyhow, I got up, got on the bike, and I left. Got, got, got it done, and I put it away, and I'm, 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 I'm done for a minute. And I was fine. But then the numbness wore off. Right? The numbness of what have happened, the numbness of realizing I could have been dead, the numbness of everything, it wore off. And then all of a sudden, when I thought about riding, my heart started to pump. When I thought about riding, I started getting nervous. When I'd get close to the bike, I'd be going, oh my gosh, what if, what if, what if? I'm scared, what if? I don't know what's going to happen. As I, as I started moving closer to these things, I, 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 I started getting scared. And I started thinking, what if, I, what if I wreck again? What if I go through this hurt again? What if I have to deal with this pain again? And I made a decision. Iran's not going to keep me out of my promise. So this was the, the, the legitimate decision I made. I thought, I'll sell my bike if I want to sell my bike, not because I'm afraid. See, God's calling you into some stuff. And you're allowing fear to keep you out of it. Fear of the unknown, fear of the could-be's, fear of having to deal with some old issues. Every time I would look at the scar on my elbow, man, I would, get, I would relive the way I felt. Now, I'm not comparing a little motorcycle wreck with the horrific experiences you've had in your past. I'm not trying to dim diminish what you went through. I'm just, I'm trying to help us understand that, that, that as I worked through this, 
I would look at that scar and it wouldn't remind me of hurt. It would remind me of healing. As I worked through this, every time I would look at myself, every time as I would think about what happened, all of a sudden I was filled with the grace of God that protected me. I was filled with hope and mercy and peace and joy. See, Haran is on the way, but it's not there to hurt you. It's not there to punish you. It's to propel you into the things that God has for your life. It's to heal you. Haran's on the way. I guess ultimately you just have to decide what you're going to do with Haran. Would you bow your heads all over the place? God, I'm deciding for me and my house that we're not going to let what, let what has happened keep us out of what will happen. We're not going to let what we did do or didn't do or should have done or shouldn't have done keep us out of what you are going to do. We're not going to allow hurt to keep us from healing any longer. You're so faithful to bring us back to Haran. Telling us how much you love us. Telling us that you're, you're bringing us to this place. Not, not for any reason other than it's part of the process to the promise. God, you're bringing us back to Haran. So we'll be better, not bitter. You're bringing us back to Haran. So that every dream and desire we have can be fulfilled. So that we won't live in empty promises. So as much as I hate it, I thank you for Haran today. I thank you that you bring me back to these places. You've let me go a long ways, a long time without having to face it. But now you're having us confront some stuff today. You're having us confront the person that hurt us. You're having us confront the boss that fired us. Confront the parent that treated us wrong, maybe abused us. You're having us confront these things. Not that we're going to have to physically confront, but, but spiritually and emotionally, you're bringing them to us today, saying, I want you to heal. So I can place you in your promise. God, you're, you're moving us today from Ur to Canaan. From lack to a land that flows with milk and honey. Today, you're restoring us. Today, you're healing us. God, today, you're helping us. God, today, you're working in us. It's you in us that worketh the will and the to-do of, of your good pleasure. God, I thank you for Haran today. If you're here right now and your heart's not right with Jesus, man, this is why we exist as a church. Listen, it doesn't matter if you ask him in your heart when you were little and you've not, if you, and, and you've not been serving him. Or, but if you just know right now your heart is not right with Jesus and you know it's time to get it right, just pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me. I've been stuck in Haran. But today I'm going to serve you. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and make me brand new. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If that was you, just stick your hand up in the air because we want to rejoice with you. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Who else? Yeah, praise God. Stand up. We just want to, we want to, we want to celebrate. We want to celebrate. Come on. Yes. Praise God. So proud of you, sis. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, praise God. The Bible guy says that heaven is throwing a party, and that's the best you got. Come on, church. Come on. Now, for the rest of us, for the rest of us, God, if you're here, man, maybe, maybe you're not. Maybe this was only for, for, for one, and that's okay. But if you're here and you know you've been stuck in a Haran, unwilling to move past it, and right now you're willing to just stick your hand up and say, God, I need your help to get past Haran. I need your help to get through. Just stick your hand up because I just believe God's going to, he, he, he sees it, man. Yeah, praise God all over the place. Yes, Father God. Yes, Father God. Yes, Father God. I refuse to, to die short of the promise that you have for my life because I won't heal in Haran. God, I thank you. God, I thank you that you have the best in store for us. God, I thank you. God, that on the way, on the way to our promise is healing. On the way to our promise, you propel us into everything 
that you have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hill Church, I love you all so much. Have a great weekend.